Hey, it's Kyle here, and it's become my yearly tradition that at the end of the year, I look back at my favorite books I read. So I'll be doing two videos on my channel, one um, talking about my five favorite nonfiction books, and one talking about my five favorite fiction books that I read in 2017. Um, so this video will be the nonfiction video. If you want to check out the fiction um, top five list, just check out my channel. That video will be there. And just keep your Keep in mind that for both of these videos, I'm saying I read these books in 2017, not that these books were published in 2017. So with that intro out of the way, I'll delve right into the list. Um, so my fifth favorite nonfiction book that I read in 2017 was Thomas Jefferson and the AAA Pirates by Brian Kilmeade and Don Yeager. This book kind of covers a very forgotten period of American history where pretty soon after the U.S. won its independence, it was instantly brought into conflict with pirates on the North African coast. And that conflict really lasted for a few decades until the situation was solved by the U.S. and also some European powers. Um, but it was basically one of the first big foreign policy tests the new country faced. And um, it was a huge issue during Thomas Jefferson's presidency, but it's an element of U.S. history that's really forgotten now. So uh, this book kind of does a great job of bringing this kind of part of U.S. history into the public's forth knowledge again, I guess you say, or forefront. Um, my only complaint is I would like the book to be a little bit more in-depth into this explanation of the history of this area. It is much more of kind of a, a glance at the history and not really a fully in-depth look at it. Um, but it still was very interesting. It's full of a lot of interesting characters. Um, you know, it's just interesting. Like, there's, there was really no boring parts to me in the book. It really read very, more like a story than a traditional nonfiction book. So I think if you don't traditionally like nonfiction books, this might be a book you might enjoy a little bit more because it is shorter and it has a lot of very interesting characters to it. Um, but be warned, if you're really a super serious into history, you might um, not, you might find it a little bit lacking of how in depth to the history explores this area. But so overall, still I really enjoyed it and that's why it was my five favorite nonfiction book that I read in 2017. Number four is The Heart of the World, A Journey to Tibet's Lost Paradise by Ian Baker. This is kind of a combination like history book um, and also a travel book, also a religious element, especially with uh, Buddhism. The, the historical part really delves into the Europeans, specifically the British effort to map this um, region of Tibet as one of the last regions of the world that really had not been mapped by Europeans yet, so there was this big blank spot on the map. And it was so remote and so hard to explore that even Tibetans in the area um, were really unclear on a lot of the past. A lot of the locals didn't even really know what lay beyond, you know, the next mountain range and stuff. It was very remote. If you lived in one kind of little valley area, you were completely cut off from the next valley system. Um, so this book kind of explores the history of that and the, the individuals who attempted to map this region. Then it also focuses on the author's basically attempt to trace the path of these explorers and basically look at how this region has changed since then, which is not very much. It's still very, very remote. And at the same time, he looks at the religious myths that have come from this area and um, how it impacts the spirituality of people that live in this area and also people that explore it. Um, so it has re very religious elements of it, very much travel aspects of it, and very much historical elements. So it's Kind of a unique book from that point of view, so I really enjoyed it. The Heart of the World by Ian Baker was my fourth favorite nonfiction book that I read in 2017. Number three is um, A Country of Vast Designs, James K. Polk, The Mexican War and the Conquest of the American Continent by Robert Mary. Uh, this book, book focuses primarily on the presidency of James Polk and also the Mexican-American War. Um, James Polk, in my opinion, has always been one of the most underrated American presidents. I think he, um, he on those all-time rankings of best presidents, I think he should be, be a lot higher. In fact, in my list, you could say he's borderline top five president. I think one reason why he doesn't get as much credit and as fame as other presidents, he was a one-term president. He did not run for re-election. And he actually passed away very soon after he left office. So, you know, a lot of times after a president leaves office, they spend the rest of their life and career kind of trying to build up their legacy. And James Polk basically passed away almost immediately. So he was literally, he wasn't there to kind of fight for his legacy like a lot of presidents have. And then within a decade of his presidency, and, and then you had the Civil War. So all the events like of the Civil War kind of tended to overshadow the Mexican-American War and also his presidency. So he kind of gets overlooked by a lot more casual 
people who explore history, but I, you know, really serious historians and political scientists kind of are aware of James Polk's um, legacy in regard to American political history. But I've never, with all that saying, as much as I, I've kind of been interested in James Polk, I've never read a book just about him. So I really enjoyed this one. It really does a great job exploring his personal history, the history of how this war came about, um, how the war took place, and the legacy of both his presidency and the war had on America's future. Um, so really enjoy this. If you're interested in American political history, I definitely would recommend you read this book. Really enjoy it. Number two on my list is The Astronaut's Guide to Life on Earth by Colonel Chris, ha Chris Hadfield. <laughs> Sorry for the mispronunciation there. I can't say Chris today. Um, many of y'all might know Chris Hadfield. He has um, uh, achieved a pretty good amount of fame in his post-astronaut career. He's done some, a lot of TV work. But while he was an uh, astronaut, he really became famous when a lot of his videos on YouTube went viral. He was on the International Space Station for a long time, and he did some music videos while he was in space. Um, so a lot of those went viral on YouTube and kind of made him a bit of a celebrity for an astronaut. And this book kind of talks about his life journey to becoming an astronaut. One thing I did not know before I read this book, I did not know he was Canadian. And how that made it even harder for him to become an astronaut. Because basically he talks about when he was a little kid, basically I think seven or eight years old, he decided he wanted to be an astronaut. And basically everything he did after that was completely aimed towards becoming an astronaut. Um, you know, he started working out, started studying harder. Um, all the career paths he chose was all aimed towards becoming an astronaut. Well, Canada gets very few astronaut slots, so he talked about how big of a challenge it was and um, how much work he had to go into, but also elements of luck that he had to, you know, get to be get one of those slots. And then beyond that, to get to go to the International Space Station. So it, it kind of is a very interesting book in talking about how you can set goals for yourself and accomplish them. There's also a lot of interesting look at the history and the science behind NASA and space exploration that I really enjoyed. Um, and he's just a very interesting figure. Um, I really encourage you to read it if you're um, a fan of autobiographies. This is really good for you. If you're interested in space exploration, I would definitely encourage you to read this book. I really enjoyed it. And that's why it was my safe, second favorite nonfiction book that I read in 2017. And lastly, my favorite nonfiction book that I read in 2017. You know, make your own drum roll sound. <laughs> it is The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. It's a very well-known book. I know Eric Larson's one of the better-known nonfiction authors that are, that are out there, so I'm sure many of y'all have heard this book before. I had personally heard of it before, before I'd read it. My sister had read this book, was really a big fan. Other people that I really respect a lot had read this book and really enjoyed it, so it was a book that was always on my list of, like, I need to get that book at some point and read it, because I think I'll really enjoy it. And I really did. Um, it explores the world of Chicago, um, leading up to Chicago hosting the World's Fair. All the elements that go into that, it was a human, humongous undertaking for Chicago to host this World's Fair. Um, the book also talks about all the important things that debuted at this World Fair. It's almost like a transition point from like um, entering into our modern age versus the old age. So, you know, there's huge technological advancements that are being debuted at the World's Fair. Um, the World's Fair really this World's Fair really helped popularize electricity. Electricity was obviously around before then, and it was already being used in some ways, but this World's Fair was really the thing that kind of put it on the forefront and really helped get it adopted early, earlier than it would have otherwise. And there's a lot of other very cool elements that kind of debuted at the World's Fair. So that part was very interesting. Um, the figures behind making the World's Fair happening, very, very interesting. There's a lot of struggle and backfighting for the various things going on, it almost has like Game of Thrones elements to it. You know, there's a lot of plotting and stuff like that. <laughs> That's really interesting. But all this is going on, there's also a huge murder mystery because basically one of the first big serial killers in American history operated during this World's Fair and basically created this diabolical murder hotel. Um, he's one of the most notorious and um, just nasty killers in American history, even in world history. He's just, he's... It's a very frightening figure. So you have these two elements of this bright future that this World's Fair is depicting and then this insane killer that's lurking in the midst in Chicago at the same time. So really, really good book. I definitely recommend it. Obviously, if I put it on my top first spot on my top five list, I'm certainly recommending. So that was my favorite book that I read nonfiction-wise in 2017. 
Now it's time for you to leave some comments. So please let me know what was your favorite nonfiction book that you read in 2017. I'd love to see what you enjoyed. If you have any nonfiction books that you think I should read, please let me know in the comment section below. Also be sure to check out my top five video for my favorite fiction books that I read in 2017. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, all that sort of good stuff. Hope you enjoyed this video and happy reading in 2018.